Hello, and welcome to Eden Technologies webinar series on data security and data loss prevention. Today's webinar is on Semantic Network DLP and is an overview and demonstration. After an introduction, I will show you the Network DLP technology, how it's structured and what it does, and then we will do a demonstration of it. But first, let me introduce myself. I'm Andy Sherman. I'm the Security Practice Lead at Eden Technologies. I'm an experienced technologist, but for 15 years I have specialized in IT and information security. Among my specialties is data security, and I've been involved with data loss prevention since the infancy of the industry. As I mentioned, this is one, one webinar in a series on data loss prevention that includes both the high-level concepts and demonstrations of the, the major technology components. Today we're dealing with network DLP. This is designed to prevent data in motion. The semantic DLP system has three major modules. First is network mod monitor. This is basically a sniffer. It detects breaches by monitoring traffic on a span port. It can detect confidential data in email, FTP, web, instant messaging, or any other encrypted protocol on the wire. It cannot do any prevention. Network prevent for email is an inline SMTP proxy that also is able to, to act on TLS encrypted streams. It can detect or prevent breaches. Because it's inline in the mail process, if it, if, it, if it detects confidential data and is so configured, it can block the email from going any further. Network and mobile prevent for web. This is an ICAP server for your web proxy. So it can monitor HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, or IM protocols using those transports that are going through your web proxy. Again, the, the, the web prevent server can detect the presence of confidential data or it can signal the, the proxy to block the post and prevent a breach. Our use cases will cover email prevent and web prevent today. We have two use cases, Graham Leach Bliley, which is a law in the U.S. protecting customer financial information, and we'll be looking for U.S. Social Security numbers and credit card numbers. We also have a use case around companies' confidential data as expressed in markings on documents. We will show you both detection only and detect and prevent scenarios. Our demonstration setup is implemented on a set of virtual servers. For the user interface, we have Outlook and a web browser, and then we have a semantic DLP system and a squid proxy implemented on some other machines. So Outlook talks to the DLP email prevent server via SMTP. Anything that passes the email prevent server then goes to a semantic encryption server, also formerly known as a PGP universal server, and that goes to the target email server. In our simple case, that one server is serving both internal and external domains, which is why it's set up like this. For web traffic, our browser is served by a squid proxy. That's an open source web proxy configured to do SSL inspection so that we can look at both regular and secure sessions. The squid proxy gets ICAP services from the DLP web prevent server, and that's, that's an ICAP server that can inspect the content from the proxy as to whether or not it contains confidential data. It can either detect or detect and prevent. Both the web prevent and email prevent servers are controlled by the DLP enforce server. This pushes down policies to those servers and receives incidents from them when something is detected. The DLP enforce server also hosts the web console that's used both to configure the system and to do all incident response. Our test files um, are contrived data to demonstrate the capabilities. We have test files of phony customer data, including fields that are in scro scope for Gra Gra Graham Leach Bliley. These files are of different sizes, so we can demonstrate action taken by the system based on the severity of, of the incident. For company confidential data, all non-public data in this company is one of three classifications, internal use, which is the least sensitive, confidential, or restricted, which is the most sensitive. These classifications are marked into the footer of the document, which is something that we can detect with the system, as you can see in the sample on the right-hand side of this slide. And now we will go to our test setup for the demonstration. 
And now we go to our demonstration DLP system. As you can see, when we log into the Enforce console, we see a dashboard that shows data about the current set of incidents in the system. I'd like to show you the policies that we will be using in this demonstration. The first one is Graham Leach Bliley. This has detection rules to detect credit card numbers or U.S. Social Security numbers. In both of those cases, we set the severity based on the number of matches. Less than 10 is low, between 10 and 50 is medium, and over 50 is high. This policy also has a response rule so that in the case of a high severity incident, that if, if it's in an email, the email will be blocked, the, and the, the user will get an indication that the email hasn't gone through, and then a notification will be sent to the user and the user's manager. Similarly, if the user attempts to post a high severity violation to the web using HTTP, HTTPS, or FTP, the transaction will be blocked and email will be sent to the user and manager. Our other policy is called Delahoo Confidential. Our uh, demonstration company is called Delahoo Company. And we have rules to detect each of the three sensitivities, internal use, confidential, and restricted, which correspond to severities of low, medium, and high. And again, as with Graham Leach Bliley, we have response rules that will block either email or web in the case of a high severity incident, in this case, an attempt to send a restricted document. So if we go to our email client, so I'm going to compose email to my friend Jeff at another company. I'm going to send him our customer file. We have two versions, a large one and a small one. I'm going to send him the small one. Here it is. And we see that this email goes through to Jeff with the attachment. If I now send him the larger customer file, which has far more than 50 social security and credit card numbers in it. We'll see that I immediately get a bounce that this did not go through. And if you look at the error code thrown by the mail system here, it says message contains excessive PII. But in fact, I get a message further from from the system specifically saying I sent a, a, an email called big with the subject of big file to Jeff and it was blocked because it contained too much PII. And in fact, the original email is attached to this notice. Um, that is largely for the benefit of my manager who also gets the same notice um, who can then supervise me better with this information. Similarly, if I send Jeff a confidential document, he will get it. Although we will see that this isn't the end of the story as far as the DLP system is concerned. If I now try and send him the restricted document, I get another bounce message from the system, this time telling me restricted documents are prohibited. And then I get notification from the DLP system with more information for me and for my boss. Now, if we look at what happened in the DLP system, we're going to the list of incidents, and I'm going to put this in ascending time order. So first I sent the customer file. And if I bring up the incident, it shows me 
what the file was. And in fact, if I click that link, it will it will invoke Excel and show me the whole file. Um, and all of the matches for these policies are highlighted. See, social security numbers and credit card numbers. See, the match count, the total match count was 39, which was under the, the block threshold. And notice that on the right-hand side is contact information for me and for my boss that was pulled out of Active Directory based on my identity from my email address. If we go to the next one, which was the file that was blocked, you see this little red stop sign um, is a quick visual cue that, cue that the action was that the message was blocked. Similarly for the confidential document, different policy, same outcome. We have an incident um, that shows what was matched. I can read the document if I'd like. And then for the restricted document, we see that the message was blocked. Now if we go back to, if we go to another tab on our web browser, um, I'm logged into my Norton Zone account, which is web storage system. And so let me upload a file to it. If I upload the small customer file, it's uploading. And then it was successfully uploaded. And if I dismiss this, you'll see there's the file sitting in, 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 my, in my Norton Zone folder. If I now try to upload the larger customer file will see, oops, an error has occurred. Please try again, although that will get the same result. Because some of these sophisticated web applications actually hide the error messages from the uh, that the proxy gives to the user, um, we, our fail-safe is to actually send the user an email notification that your web post was, was blocked for this reason because it contained too much PII. And similarly, my boss is notified that it contained too much PII. Oh, and if we refresh the incident list, we will see that there are two new incidents um, with, a, with, with an icon indicating that these came from the web. Again, showing um, showing that I sent it, what URL it was, and what the content was, both for the one that was permitted and the one that was blocked. Now let's look at what additional protection we could put on this. We go back to the policy list. Um, the, we would like to, for, for the gram leach bligh policy, for those things that are permitted to go through, we would like to add a response rule that uh, for the case that we're not blocking it, we'll, we'll encrypt, encrypt the document through the semantic encryption server. And so what this rule does, it modifies the message and it modifies the message by inserting a header telling, telling the encryption server to, to put all of the content, the entire message and all the attachments into a PDF file that's encrypted. And we do this when it's email and the severity is not high. So we add that, let's save it. We go back to the mail client. I'm gonna compose a new message to Jeff. with the customer file in it. And I send it. And now we see Jeff has a new piece of email. And notice that this time, Jeff didn't get the message that as I sent it, he got a message from, from, from the encryption server saying that what he's received is a, is a P, PGP universal PDF message, message which contains, contains a PDF file, which if you open it 
ask you for a password. And the first time you first time you receive one of these, it sends you a link to set your password before sending you a file. So I entered just password. And it decrypts the file. And in this file we see we have two two document two two files. One is the body, which you see here. Um, in a real email that might be more interesting than what we have here. And an attachment that if we click it open, much as we would in a regular email, it brings up Excel and opens up the file. So that if this email goes astray, nobody but Jeff is able to, to read the message. And that, that applies an additional layer of protection on, on the PII. If we go back to the incident list, in the DLP system, we see that there's a new incident now for this one, and a new icon has appeared. This little pencil symbol means uh, that we've modified the message, and the modification was putting in the header that caused the encryption to ha ha happen. Meanwhile, though, we still have an incident, and whoever's doing incident response for the enterprise can see that this message went out, but that it was encrypted. And that concludes our demonstration. Today we gave you an overview and demonstration of Symantec's network DLP technology. The remaining videos in this series will demonstrate the endpoint and storage DLP modules. For more information about Eden, please visit our website, www.edentechnologies.com. I invite you also to explore our offerings, including our data loss prevention practice. If you have general questions, feel free to send them to connect at edentechnologies.com. If you have security questions or comments on this webinar series, please send them directly to me, a Sherman at edentechnologies.com. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you've enjoyed the, the webinar.